So this next video is going to talk about learning and how animals learn behaviors throughout their lives. Um, so the first thing we're going to talk about is going to be something called habituation. And this is something you've done many, many times and not even realized it probably. Um, and that's going to be a loss of response to some sort of stimulus because it's not conveying any new information to you. So you just kind of drown it out. Um, it kind of goes along with the idea of crying wolf where you're like, I've heard it, I've heard it, I've heard it, it doesn't mean anything, and you just kind of don't pay attention. Um, the example that I give in here with your PowerPoint is the prairie dogs. So they're really cute, and um, prairie dog towns, if you've ever been to one, it's very, very noisy. So there's a lot of chatter going around because, you know, they're trying to communicate with one another about all the different things that are going on. Well, they have a guard, that the, and the guard actually sits a little bit outside of the prairie town, prairie dog town, and what their job is is to look around and make sure there's no predators coming. And if they do, they actually give a different call. So habituation would be where, you know, there's somebody who's just hanging out and he can hear all the chitter chatter and he's not paying attention to that. But then all of a sudden he hears that warning call by the guard and actually pays attention because he knows something important is happening, right? Um, people habituate to their alarm clocks where they will just not hear their alarm clock going off anymore and they'll have to put it across the room because they just kind of shut it off in their sleep, right? Um, I unfortunately just learned that I'm really habituated to babies crying. I was in Target and I was just walking around and my friend was like, God, that baby has just been crying for like 20 minutes. And I was like, it has? I had no idea. No idea. So I'm going to be an awesome mom. Um, but anyway, interesting, right? Uh, the different forms of habituation that we have. Okay. Um, imprinting. Imprinting is something that we have seen in cartoons. So um, they actually make fun of imprinting where you have a little duckling and it comes out of its egg and it sees like a cat or something and it calls it mama, right? Um, that's kind of making fun of the idea of imprinting. Imprinting is actually um, a formation of a habit that has to happen during something called a sensitive period. And that's going to be where this little baby can actually um, organize um, all of its behavior and, and understand what's going on. And so what happens is um, they can actually imprint crazy stuff, but it's really important for a lot of survival behavior. So um, there's this famous picture of imprinting right here. Um, Lorenz is going to be a behaviorist that was, you know, really famous for this, and he imprinted on these geese. And so they just followed him around because they imprinted on him. Um, now, some people were really upset with this study because they were like, you're totally messing with nature by doing that. And going along with that, somebody did this, where um, there were these cranes that used to migrate to this um, island to mate. And what happened was because of, you know, whatever, they um, stopped going there and their population just started to dwindle because that was where they mated. So what somebody came up with is, well, why don't we get one of these airfoil planes or whatever those are called, a little glider, and um, why don't we have them imprint on us and we'll take them to that island and we'll see what happens. And it actually worked. And so their population is rebounding as a result of it. Pretty cool, right? But um, what's interesting about it is, you know, somebody came up with the idea of like, well, what if another one of those flew by and they were like, oh, mama. So you have to be careful when you do stuff like that. You know, nature is not a perfect thing, right? as we've learned. Okay, um, spatial learning is another type of learning that can happen. Um, spatial learning is kind of learning your surroundings and where everything is. Um, so you use landmarks, which are things that you know the location of, and then you can create what's called a cognitive map. So um, some people really are spatial learners, and those are the people that when they give you directions somewhere, they're like, oh yeah, at the gas station, turn left. And you're like, can you just tell me the street, you know? But they're kind of using more like landmarks to do that. Um, my dog, uh, my other dog, used to be uh, diabetic, um, and she went blind. And so the vet said, I hope you have your furniture exactly how you want it till she goes, because she's made a map and I was like what and she said yeah don't don't move anything because she'll bump into it and that dog was blind as a bat I could throw the tennis ball in the house and she would miss all of the furniture and get the ball no problem but if I left a chair out or if I left the dishwasher open she'd bump right into it because she'd made a map right so um, there's another awesome study that somebody did this is the uh, <laughs> shortest PhD ever created I'm super jealous um, so what this guy did is um, 
He knew that this um, type of hornet would actually um, use landmarks to find its nest. So, you know, let's say that it looked like this where there was a bunch of pine cones circling this nest. So what he did was he um, recreated the landmarks, but there was no nest in there. And what happened was the bee just, or the hornet just kept bumping into the ground like, I know there should be a nest there, what's going on? That's a perfect example of spatial learning. So you know that that insect actually uses that. So pretty interesting how they can actually be really good at it, you know, but once it changes, it kind of throws them off. Um, you've actually used spatial learning if you've come into your house and a light bulb is out. And so it's all dark and you kind of know where the table is. You kind of know where the chairs are so you don't walk into them, right? That's, that's going to be spatial learning too. Um, okay, the next type that we're going to talk about is going to be called associative learning. And this is associating something with something else. Um, there's going to be two types, and in the next video we will actually get into that.